All right, hi there. Welcome to this Vagrant tutorial. We're going to take a look at Vagrant, which makes development environments very easy. All right, so where do we get started? Well, first, head to vagrantup.com and go to the download section and then install it onto your device. Um, this can be a Mac, a PC, uh, a PC with Linux on it, you know, go ahead and, and set this up and install it. Then next we're going to verify if Vagrant actually is installed. So all you have to do is open up a bash terminal, which is just terminal.app, and type Vagrant. At this point, it should tell you, like, these are the commands you can do, which is great. We're going to use Vagrant today. If it says this command doesn't exist, you may have not installed it correctly. So please do that and install it correctly. All right, next up is we're going to be installing a standard Ubuntu 404 base install that we're going to use to set up our machine. Now this is really cool and all, so we can actually just do this. Vagrant init chef Ubuntu 1404 in the directory where we want to install this image. That's very easy. Um, all we have to do is head over to the right folder and deploy it. So in our case, I want to actually make a new Vagrant folder in my home directory. Now again, this is what it looks like currently. And we want to be doing this in the terminal, although some of the work you can actually do uh, yourself. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to start by making a new directory. Making a new directory is mkdir. Now notice how we start in the uh, current directory, which is my home directory. If you want to put it somewhere else, you need to make sure you change to that directory by using the cd command. But in my case, I'm already into the right folder. We can actually check the folder's contents by typing ls, which is going to list all of my folders. At this point, I notice, yeah, this is the right one. So I can make a new directory called, um, well, let's call it Vagrant. Okay. Notice how it popped up in Finder here as well. And then I'm going to head over to Vagrant. Again, I could just type V and then usually autocomplete does the job, but we'll just go on and do this. Here we go. And then we can make another directory called Ubuntu. Again, we're going to CD to it. At this point, we can paste in Vagrant init from, uh, from this URL. And it's going to then download the file. Uh, and the entire machine, the box itself, and then it's going to make a Vagrant file for this. Now, I already had it downloaded. I don't want to waste your time. It's just going to do that for you. And then it's going to tell you a Vagrant file has been placed in that directory. Let's head over to it and check it out. Let's open it up with my uh, Sublime Text Editor. You can just use whatever editor you like. And there's all this kind of information. It's all really useful. But there's one thing that you need to change if you want to be able to access this locally, and that is this line, line 27, the uh, private network. I'm going to uncomment this line, and this allows me to actually access the machine at this IP address. All right? And that's really cool. So let's vagrant up. That's all you need to do. Vagrant up. Type that in your terminal, and your machine's going to start. It's going to actually import the, the base box that it downloaded a while before, and then it's going to prep it for launch. Now, a server is basically a big terminal that you can use. Um, classic Ubuntu desktop users may be surprised, but that's what the server is. It's just the basic packages, and this box actually has even less packages now, if you can believe that. All right, everything's done, but we need to install the, necess uh, the the required software, okay? So that's Apache, that's MySQL, and PHP. We need, the, we need these three things, otherwise we're not going to be able to go to this IP address that is listed over here. It's not going to return anything. It's going to error out. So, okay, let's get on to it. First and foremost, we need to access our machine. Right, we could just open it up in VirtualBox. No. We need to SSH in to our box. Now, Vagrant makes this really easy. 
Usually you would SSH, then type your address, um, and of course the user account. So usually we do uh, SSH root at, and then the uh, IP address, which could be whatever the hell it could be. I'm just typing random digits here, but you know, this is not an IP address, but you would just type that and then you would be asked for your password. Now fortunately, Vagrant doesn't require you to remember any of these things. Just type Vagrant SSH and we're in. You see, now I'm Vagrant at Vagrant, which is my user account. I automatically have all privileges. If you're actually deploying to a real cloud server, you're gonna have to enter your password a few times. You know, that's uh, that's for them, but hey, let's get onto it. Now that we're in here, we can uh, first update our packages, which is relatively easy. Just type sudo apt-get update. What this does, it's going to fetch, it's going to ask for our root permission, which is what sudo does. apt-get is going to check our package manager, and it's going to update the packages that haven't been updated yet. So let's do that right now. It's going to connect to the archives. And it's going to download everything. I'm going to skip this process here for a moment to make sure that you don't have to watch this all happen. All right, there we go. It's done. It didn't take very long. It took half a minute. And it updated everything. Good. Next up is we need to install Apache. Again, we want to ask for root permissions, sudo. Then we want to apt-get, which is package manager, and we're going to tell him to install Apache 2. This is a package. All we have to do is type enter, uh, and it's going to ask me to continue. Of course, I want to download and use this, so let's make it happen. And at this point, when Apache runs, I can head to the IP address that was set in the Vagrant file in our local browser and then we will be able to see the, uh, or should be able to see the It Works page. And again, um, here it is. So this is our default page. Now, um, where is it located? You might wonder, uh, where can we find this? Now, um, you might have figured out that you can actually set up shared folders and stuff, so you can actually access uh, set up shared folders, which is really cool. But at this point, we should be able to say, uh, read this through, which contains all the information about Apache 2. Notice that it tells us where we can find this file. So let's head over to that var www.html directory. At this point, I can say, view this file by typing nano, which is an editor, and then I can type index.html to find out what is in here. All right? Um, I can use Control x to get out of here, and I'm back here. For the sake of our development server, we're going to be using sudo to access everything that we need to do. So sudo uh, info.php, and then we're going to use uh, our editor nano to make this work. And then, you know, of course, on a real production server, you're going to be doing things quite differently. You're going to be setting up permissions for user accounts, but like this, uh, we can just save this away. Now, notice if I head over to uh, PHP info, uh, what is it? Info.php is just going to say, well, it'll actually not show anything. It'll just show me this because it doesn't know how to interpret this, okay? Now, we want to change that. We want to ensure that our server actually understands PHP, right? It's kind of important. But actually our second step is going to be installing MySQL. So I'm just going to clear this file up and uh, let's get to installing MySQL. All right, in order to install a, um, MySQL, we need to apt-get install MySQL server, libapashi mod, uh, Apache 2 mod off MySQL and PHP 5 MySQL. These are all packages we'll need. Uh, and it's going to fetch some stuff. It needs a lot of this uh, of these files and we need to set this up. So again it's going to work.
and then it's going to ask for a new password. I'm just going to make this root root. You should possibly, you should probably choose a better password. Okay. And then we're going to finish up uh, once this process is done by uh, using the MySQL setup script. This can be done by doing sudo user bin mysql underscore secure underscore installation. Just in our password, we just set in root, and then we don't want to change it. We want to remove all anonymous users, disallow remote uh, root login, remove the test database, yes, and we want to reload the privilege tables. Done. Congratulations, we just set up MySQL. Next up is the final part, the PHP. So again, sudo apt get you getting it, right? Uh, PHP 5, and then we're going to be doing all this stuff. Actually, I'm just going to copy this over. Um, this. Um, what are all these? PHP 5 is just PHP. Libapashi 2 mod PHP 5 is basically uh, the interpreter for Apache 2. It's a modification, it's a plugin, and then encrypt for security. Again, just, yeah, we want to fetch this. And it's going to install this, and that's pretty cool. And it's going to restart the web server. And now if we head over to info.php, turns out that yes, we got this all running. All right, so that's it. And at this point, you can just connect uh, to this specific uh, Vagrant box and uh, you can set it all up. If you set up some shared folders, uh, I'm pretty sure you can share an additional folder. Here we go. Uh, use this folder and then we can actually set up um, our data. And this is very useful uh, to share files between host and client uh, in a very easy fashion. The easiest way to set up uh, data is basically, you know, like use git, right? You can use git and just um, pull the repository to your uh, var HTML directory and you your server will respond. All right, so that's it. Our machine is set up. Um, we're just going to take a look at this here, this uh, synced folder, shall we? All right. Um, the first argument is the path on the host to the actual folder. Second argument is the path on the guest to mount the folder and the optional third argument is a set of non-required options. It's just figure in data. I'm going to see if we can't uh, set this to var ww html so that this is synced, okay? And then we're going to save this file and of course we're going to have to abort uh, this. Uh, so let's see what we can do here. Uh, oh sorry, I need to exit first. Now I can, I'm back in my local console. And now I can do vagrant halt, I think it is. So it's going to gracefully shut down my VM. Good job. I can reload, it's not going to do anything anymore because the server is down. And now we're going to make sure we vagrant it up again. Uh, the host path to our shared folder is missing. Uh, data. Hmm. Well, actually, I think I made a mistake. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. Yeah, you want to set this up just to be data, like data. That's the folder. Let's see if this doesn't work. This should work. Yep, this should do the trick. Once it's running, we'll just open this file again and 
we should have the access it should start syncing this folder mm. yeah see so it's gonna set this up um, let's reload this page it's not gonna find anything uh, it's not going to find anything because it's just going to sync these folders at which point uh, I need to make the files here. Okay, so let's open up Sublime Text again and uh, let's write that PHP, PHP info, we'll close this and then we'll save it to our data directory as info.php. There it is, and now I should be able to, voila, here we go. I can do all kinds of crazy stuff now, so I can echo something, something, and here it is, okay? So, all I had to do was change this folder, and now it's synced up. Um, so you can, you know, like put your own projects in here, like your Angular projects or something that requires a web server, and now you can access it. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so all you need to do to uh, put this thing out is do vagrant halt. And it'll stop it. So now you've got your own web server with a data folder that actually syncs everything. Now that was easy. Well, it wasn't easy easy, but it sure was entertaining. And you now know how to set up a machine. How cool is that? As a final test, I'd like to show you how to connect to a Vagrant uh, MySQL instance through SQL Pro. We're going to be using SSH. And this is SQL Pro. I just created a favorite here. So we're going to be connecting to the local host, which is this one. We're going to enter the credentials for our MySQL instance. When we configured this, this was root root. We're just going to select no database and no port. And then we're going to set up SSH host, which is the same. Our user is Vagrant. Remember, we use this user to log in. We've got our insecure private key that we're going to be using. You can find this now. Um, oh, uh, you can find this over up in your local folder. Then select Show Hidden Files, right? Then head over to Vagrant D and then click the insecure private key. Once that is done, you can enter the port, which is 2222, and then you can test the connection. And then we can, it says, you know, our connection succeeded, we can actually connect ourselves, and here we are. It might tell you that you have a key that you need to check, just select OK, and you can then connect. Boom, it's that easy, and now we can manipulate our MySQL database. So at this point, you can just do what you want, uh, like add a new database. And here it is. We just created a new database on our Vagrant machine. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching uh, this comprehensive setup for uh, beginners. If you liked it, if it helped in any way, let me know post a comment, and um, if you want to see more tutorials like this, um, yeah, just let me know. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a nice day.